Chances are you're sitting in a church youth group right now and you've got questions. And now you want answers. Be honest, you may even have some doubts about some things you've heard or read in the Bible. And some things just aren't making sense, but you're in the right place. But before you get those answers, you got to ask the questions. Things just don't always make sense, right? On the air is hitting the streets to find some people who have doubts and questions. How do we know that we're in the right religion? How do we know the Bible's true? How do you know that man didn't make up the Bible? What do you do when nothing makes sense? You may wonder, where is God? Is he even there? Can you see air? Only in LA. Can you see the wind? No. A breeze? No. Uh-uh. Nope. No way. You've seen the effects of the wind, but you haven't seen the wind. It's hard to believe in what you can't see. Hey, Sherlock, there's a mystery to it. You got questions? Go look for answers. Are you still here? Don't you people have homes? I'm a very individualistic person. I'm very reasonable and logical. Did you know that less than half of all teenagers claim that the Christian faith is important in their lives today? Somewhere between childhood and maturity lies uncertainty. The world's most suspicious fragrance by Calvin Klein. Some people think that Christianity is like a, a club that you join in, and everyone must dress alike and talk alike and act alike and even think alike. No questions. Keep your head down and follow the person in front of you. We'll tell you where you're supposed to go. Hey, wouldn't want to go against the flow. That's not a club. That's a cult. We're not clones. We're Christians. Christians aren't perfect. Just forgiven. Great idea for a bumper sticker, don't you think? Just stick that baby on the family van. The things that I want to do, I don't do. And the things that I don't want to do, what's up with that? That's what I do. What is up with that? I don't think you should have to come and go up and and eat bread and make pretend like it's the body of Jesus Christ and drink wine and make pretend it's the blood. I'm not an expert on the Bible by any means. I don't know very much about it. I don't read it. But from what I have heard, it seems far-fetched to me. Even though he admits that he doesn't know very much about the Bible and that he doesn't read it, well, why doesn't he read it? I mean, this is an important decision. How can you take the exam without reading the book? Hello? Blue phone ringing for you. Dude, how can you believe in Christianity? It's just a bunch of made up fables, man. The problem with cynicism is that it's dishonest. You see, the skeptic honestly searches for the truth and doesn't accept the easy answer. I mean, the disciples were saying, man, we saw Jesus risen from the dead. Break out the chips. Let's have a big party. And when Thomas examined the evidence, he concluded, hands down, Jesus was in fact the risen Lord. And this is what true skepticism leads to, faith. Be honest in your search for truth. I mean, don't buy the cynic's line that no intelligent person could ever be a Christian. Whatever. Give me a break. Investigate for yourself. Read books. I recommend Mere Christianity by C.S. Lewis or Evidence That Demands a Verdict by Josh McDowell. Tell God about it. Be honest with God about what you're thinking, even if you're not sure He exists right now. Nothing can separate you from His love, not even your doubt.